arrival. First the island, the cross of truth. Another island, a continent, a line half water, half metal. An island of birds, Goyanan, hail. An island of birds, Goyanan, Pachacute, hail, Pachacute. Sounds above an island in the air, trees, Goyanan, Pachacute, hail, Pachacute. In the early 13th century, an army of Chechemeca nomads with innovative ways of warfare invaded the valley of Mexico from the north. Forcibly taking women from the valley as their wives, they also began to adapt the ways of government, architecture, and religion. They found a stronghold on an island on Lake Texcoco. Roughly 250 years later, it is estimated that the Aztec Standing Army numbered nearly 300,000, and that 25 million people lived in the valley, filled with subordinate kingdoms. While the Aztecs never ended the diversity of beliefs and customs among their subjects, by 1519 they did control most of the central region of Mexico and pushed to control the coastal regions of Veracruz. But the Aztecs were not without enemies who were not afraid to meet them on the battlefield. On the Iberian Peninsula in Europe, after 700 years of battle for political, economic and religious control, a monarchy called the Spanish expanded their nationhood with the defeat of the Moors and the expulsion of the Jews. The new regime took their turn in establishing a national racial and spiritual purity. It was 1492. With these dynamics in place, Spain began its explorations of the Americas. You have soldiers of all classes. Uh, but we, we tend to, to stereotype them as Christian, as, as these kind of monster colonizers. But you're going to have some, some men who, who have uh, education, Cortes being an example. Spanish explorations moved along the Yucatan and had come into contact with numerous cities of people under Mayan political and religious systems. In 1511, um, there had been from the area of, of Darien, there was a ship going to, to Jamaica. And the ship um, obviously went under. There were like 11, from 11 to 20 survivors that uh, wound up on a raft and um, the currents took him towards Yucatan. And uh, out of those 20 original people, um, there were only two that, that survived. One of them was Gonzalo Guerrero and the other one was Jerónimo de Aguilar. Shipwrecks and small battles and stories each side spread about the other including the story of a powerful city of gold on a lake. It was in February 1519 when Hernan Cortes, who had joined the conquest of Cuba as an aide to the treasurer, set out to continue the exploration of the coastal region of Mexico. He had roughly 500 soldiers and 16 horses. Cortes was a restless landowner searching for gold. In Cozumel, Cortes discovered the fate of two Spaniards who had gone before him. What happened was that one of them, uh, at least according to the chronicles, uh, became, uh, went native and uh, became Mayan, uh, married a Mayan woman, had Mayan children. And, uh, and when Cortes uh, sends a letter, because he had heard that there were Spaniards in the area, uh, so he sent a letter to them, and the only person who comes in is Jerónimo de Aguilar. Uh, Jerónimo de Aguilar then tells him that, that uh, Gonzalo Guerrero had refused to come because he was already married and had children. The, the traditional history of Mexico always tells you that the first mestizo children were the children of La Malincha and Cortés, and, and historically that is not true. slave girl was living in Tabasco. Se 
Supposedly, she came from a noble family, and when her father died, her mother remarried and had a son by this new husband. And so Malinche, in a sense, was、uh, no longer needed for inheritance. And so they devised a plan to get rid of her. And supposedly, it is her mother then who decides to、uh, fake her death and sell her as a slave. One group of Mayas gave gave her to another group of Mayas so that she learned actually two set two sets of dialects. I personally have gotten this as a kind of nomadic existence. Uh, which would make sense from the point of view of learning languages and knowing the territory. And then, when the Spaniards came, then the Mayas gave the Spaniards twenty women, and that's how they got Malinche. And that was not uncommon, and slavery was not uncommon. How she became a slave depends on where the story comes from. Cortez's secretary writes Malinche was the victim of tribal warfare and taken as a slave, later to be passed on to the Tabascans. The first meeting of Malinche and Cortez would go mostly unnoticed. Following the footsteps of a previous expedition, Cortez landed in Tabasco, hoping to refresh his supplies. Instead. He encountered his first battle. A display of cavalry tactics apparently ended the fighting in favor of the Spanish, and Cortez, using Aguilar as his translator, received gifts from the Tabascans, including twenty women. Jeronimo Aguilar、eh, made it translate. La Malinche don't like. She was smiling because was a wrong translation. In Cortez saw La Malinche, and she, he said, "Come." And he was、uh, making the translation because、uh, La Malinche only was、uh, here to speak Spanish, was learning Spanish. I think that sometimes there comes a moment in history when you must act, and I think she acted. I think that's why I would say that her survival skills must have been wonderful. You know, to be able to survive, perhaps being sold into slavery, thinking that your mother is burying you falsely, being transferred from tribe to tribe, and then again to another tribe of these people who come from across the waters. This is how the Spaniards might have been、uh, perceived by her.